Surah Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajisa Da'ifu, Miskeenu Zalimu Jahal <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah <laughs> <Shall> we care. <laughs> we covered a, a lot of information <laughs> in the last two days. So inshaAllah people are, are still absorbing that reality and that the immense oceans of Zul Qidah and the immense oceans of Surah Zalzala in which Allah whatever hidden going to come out and that a shaking so that Allah can bring out its reality. And alhamdulillah that in this holy month of 11 and the reality of La ilaha illallah to be known through the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and alhamdulillah we've talked very deeply on that reality and the station of annihilation and effacing that as much as we bring ourselves into a nothingness and no matter what Allah gives to us and whatever we have of our intellect or property or ability that in the face of Allah it's nothing, it's not a station of not having anything and, and being homeless. And but فَغِلُّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى هُوَ اللَّهُ الْقَانِي is the recognizing Allah is the wealthy one, Allah is the sovereign and we are but His servants. And that whatever Allah gives to the servant that it doesn't enter into their heart and doesn't overtake them with pride and envy and, and bad characteristics. Poverty in the way of Allah is a state of recognition that we are poor in comparison to Allah and the Divinely Kingdom and that no matter what Allah gives us of knowledges, of benefits, of blessings, none of it is in comparison to Allah's grace and majesty and less than a drop has been received. So it's a state in which to Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuously remain with our cup empty and as a result of keeping our cup empty and always with our hands towards Allah then Allah to fill the cup because the arrogance when the, the character becomes prideful and arrogant then no longer it can receive the tajallis or it's not even asking for the tajallis. To be Allahu al-qaniyum wa faqir billahi ta'ala is that, Ya Rabbi Whatever you gave to me it's poor, I'm poor compared to the immense oceans that you have. That hilm al mazi to, to give me more from what you have Ya Rabb, that it doesn't take from your oceans, it doesn't diminish your oceans, it's not something of a difficulty for you. So it's a relationship that the servant must develop with the reality of the Divinely Presence. That Ya Rabbi that whatever you have that to give to me and whatever you gave to me I'm nothing. And then not to allow the, the pride to enter within the being 
and then that closes or fills the cup and that becomes the danger. So we go around thinking we have something to give to people but in reality maybe we are going around because Allah wants to teach us things. And that's what's important is that if you sit in one place in the tariqah training and you've only tasted one way of Islam, you're very tainted in your understanding because you think everybody is like from your homeland. And the reality of going around is you realize that people are different. In a Muslim country if you're going to go and do tariqah dawah is going to be completely different because you don't have to call them to meditation because they're all praying. You call them to haqqaiqs and ishq al-Muhammadiyyah no doubt. Then Allah has servants whom are located in the west and what you're going after in the west are those servants whom their inclination is toward spirituality. As a result of them inclined towards spirituality because we're not going after contractors, we're not going after physicians and lawyers and, and, and businessmen, we're not having seminars on how to do spiritual business. But Allah is inspiring the guides in these regions that target the spiritually inclined people because by their nature they have a hunger for malakut. They have a hunger for realities. So as a result what is the most dominant spiritual force? Hinduism and Buddhism. There's no Jewish spirituality and definitely no Christian spirituality. So when Western societies wanted to become spiritual they went towards Eastern religions that were more approachable for them. And this because 35 years of doing this da'wah we know exactly what they were targeting. As a result they're inclined towards Buddhism, meditation, Zen, peacefulness and nirvana. So then Allah being the best of those to market and the best of those to represent His deen inspires within Prophet that He tells His servants whom are da'is in the west target their spirituality. Speak to them in a language that they recognize and that's what meant by the hadith that the believer lowers his wings to people. Is what? Be from them, talk with them in a similar language and understanding so that they can relate to you. Means you don't come to a Western culture and act like it's full PhD in Chinese. They don't understand what you're talking about, they're not familiar with the terms that you're addressing. So then that's why the tariqah's hikmah and especially the trainings that have in the West and for the Western audience is speak to them on a common denominator. Speak to them about energy as they've been trained in meditation, as they've been trained in breathing, as they've been trained in trying to reach a state of nirvana, teach them that the ways of the heaven through the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is so much more powerful. And that becomes why this way is being taught like this. It's geared to the West, it's taught to the audiences of the West. But it's so appealing for the audiences of the East now because they're completely deprived of these realities. They're completely deprived of anyone speaking to them about the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, energy haqqaiqs, ilma huruf and all of these ways of Gnosticism and spirituality. But this is the understanding of why it's been taught this way in the West and that's why it's important for people to travel the world. 
Not so much they have lights to dispense to people but Allah wants to show His kingdom that in one part of your kingdom you'll be talking one way. In another part of your kingdom you have to address the people in a different way. And if you want to catch them that becomes the cleverness from the heart of Prophet is that you have to offer people by lowering your wings, offer them the reality in the terms and in the understanding that they know and that they're familiar with and bring them to the higher ways of the heavens and the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and the realities of Islam. It's a slow process and it's a process based on these realities of energy and everything that been taught here of tafakkur and contemplation. And so alhamdulillah people come from other areas and watch from other areas and they think that this is so different, so bizarre. Why they talk like this? Why they teach like this? And that's its understanding. Because to every area there's a different way of approaching the reality and there's different terms used because they speak different languages. They have different understandings and the hikmat and the hikmat al-Islam, the immense wisdoms of the ocean of Islam is the ability to address everyone in their language. Not just one language for everyone but everyone has an ability to be addressed in their language. Means the, the haqqaiqs can talk to computer programmers. Not in the uh, fiqr and in the complexity of fiqr but they talk to them in the haqqaiqs of numbers. And by even hearing the reality of numbers many come to Islam. Talk to physicians on the haqqaiqs of medicine in Qur'an and in hadith and as a result they read it in English the miraculous nature of these realities and secrets and they came to Islam. So it means Allah has planted within every language and within every being a means in which to approach. And in the infinite reality of Allah and the immense orchestra of Sayyidina Muhammad means the immensity of the orchestra in which they play the beatific tunes of paradise is under the being the conductor is Prophet For every region he has a tongue and a way and that becomes the beatific nature in Jamil Nas, the reality of Prophet the one whom gathers mankind that to each, each group he speaks a reality that assimilates or tunes into their heart and they hear the call and samina watana and they come running towards the oceans of reality. And we pray that Allah expand our understanding and give us patience that in the vastness of these oceans we spent the 30-35 years in travelling and to see the fruits and flavours of the realities of Islam and all of its diversity and all of its beatific nature. And this is the, the greatness of the one whom travels in the way of Allah the one whom sees the vastness of Allah's kingdom just on this dunya. As soon as they move through the dunya to, to see how people are practicing Islam, the nature and characteristics of the people and how best are you going to address the different peoples and different customs and different understandings. And that becomes then the perfection of the way and the perfection of the da'i in the one whom is trying to do da'wah to Ummat al-Muhammad and the ummah in which has not yet heard the message of Islam which is a nation in which has to be addressed to be brought into these realities and to be dressed by these realities. Subhana rabbi wa rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ashshafa ya Rasul Kareem, ameen. 
What we got from our immense online group that posting, commenting on the videos, please put your comments in the comment section, give a summary of what you understood from the talk. It's very nice because people can come to the video and start reading all these summaries. So it's become like the cheat notes of the talk, they can read them, read them and say, oh it's interesting and they'll be inspired to maybe watch the video in its entirety. So alhamdulillah and raises our algorithms that people at the YouTube say, oh people like this video and then they start to show it and present it more inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa So is keeping your word a part of being a Siddiq? Now we said before that a Muslim doesn't lie. There are many things that a, a, a mu'min can do but the description was that he would not lie. And we described in the talks at the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is a sadiq to love. And that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq inspired within us that be true to your word and the reality of that was be true to your, your commitment to love. The love that you have for Prophet be true to it, stand by it, honour it and guard it. If you should do so, you may have the opportunity to rise to be a sadiq. So who will inherit the siddiqiyya dress of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salaam? One he gave his money, the one whom was truthful and thought they didn't lie, the one who has all these different characteristics or what he was explaining to our hearts directly. Is no, I was truthful to my love to Prophet and I stood by it and I lived and died by it. And that's what's important. Now take that and put it into our everyday. Say, Shaykh, I'm like that. Okay, well, you'll be tested like that. Means if your love is true to Prophet, then every way you govern yourself has to be based on that curriculum. That because of my love for Prophet I am allowing to be humiliated, I'm allowing to be in difficulty, I'm allowing to stay quiet, I'm allowing all of these things, why? Because of the love of Prophet I respect people because of the love of Prophet I dislike people because of the love of Prophet I will honour people because of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad or have nothing to do with them because of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad It governs our every aspect of life. So when next time you want to treat somebody badly, first put the temperament of that question that do you think if you treat them badly how does that govern your relationship with Prophet Does it jeopardize that? Does it dishonour that? Did you break your covenant of that love because of that? And if that is the governing reality of your wujud, if your entire being in your soul, you should be safe. And that calibrates the person because love for yourself, your ego, your understanding is rubbish. Because who cares what you like, you didn't like, what your ego liked, what you did, your ego didn't like. But our lives were to govern it based on what Prophet would think about. And as a result this is the, the calibration what we call the reality of truth. That we like whom Prophet is pleased with, we don't like whom Prophet is not pleased with. And everything in our life is to govern that reality and, and try to adhere to that reality. That becomes our, our calibration. So are you going to respect somebody because you want to respect them or because they're respected by Prophet 
No, because they are respected by Prophet that becomes the governing law. You are to like somebody that's disliked by Prophet because you like them. No, you don't like them because that may cause a harm in your relationship with Prophet They'll ask you that those people they don't like me and I don't like them, why are you with them? So I mean everything in our life that becomes how we calibrate our questions and our answers, our actions and our deeds inshaAllah. And that was what was trying to be conveyed is, is be loyal to your love for Prophet Every other loyalty well, who knows comes and goes. And do you lie? Yes, everybody lies. Do they ask for forgiveness? Yes. But can you lie about what you promised Allah on the day of promises? That Allah said, Allah Alastu bi rabbikum wa qalu bala. Then the day Allah created the souls and said, Am I not your Lord? And we said, Yes. But much more detailed than that is Allah said, I'm your Lord, I'm sending you to earth, you're going to do this, 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 you're going to accept this, you're going to believe in that. And we said, Bala, yes. So you can't go back on your last breath and say, No, I never promised these things, Allah. And Allah will play the recorder and said, No, you did. That's the lie that you can't get away from. You can't go back to Allah and say, No, no, nobody came to me, I didn't know I was supposed to do all these nice things. I took whatever you gave me and I went to horrible places. They can't say that. That's what's meant about the lie that you cannot lie about what we promised Allah and what we promised we would accomplish with this life that was given to us inshaAllah. By taking the tariqah and taking the hands of the Muhammadan guides it's at least an opportunity to begin to fulfill the covenant. How can anyone fulfill the covenant if they haven't even taken bayat and allegiance to the covenant? The baya is necessity that you've taken the hand and you've taken the path in which to fulfill your ahad and your covenant with Allah If somebody tunes in and figures out, hey I've never taken bayat, so then how could you possibly try to ta fulfill your covenant if you didn't even accept and acknowledge the covenant of Allah So alhamdulillah this is the blessings of tariqah and Allah guiding whom He guides. And there is no guidance if Allah doesn't guide, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, could you talk about the drop of Qudra given to the nine Sultan al-Awliya zikr, they breathe entire secret of Holy Qur'an? No. Not my place. What, what do we gain from that other than storytelling? In our lives try to think that, oh Shaykh Nurjan when he talks it's about what we should be doing. No, no matter how high the haqqaiq there's a way for you to approach a reality as far as breathing, meditating, contemplating trying to reach to the presence of Prophet If for the sake of just storytelling that has the, the benefit for us is of what? Then, then we have to figure that that's maybe egoistic. But for ourselves the muraqabah will take you to and the possibility of entering towards that door. Just for the shaykh to mention that is a clue that you have to be meditating. If you're not connecting and meditating that reality will never be relevant to you. So that's the importance, that's why they sometimes they, they ring these different bells to entice people, make your tafakkur. That if you make your tafakkur and contemplate and begin to visualize the shaykh, visualize that becomes so powerful and then you begin to see Mawlana Shaykh, Sultanul Awliya, then uh, you may be invited into that circle to be perfected. 
But if you're not making tafakkur then talking about the immensity of the circle, the immensity of the power of the breath, which of our nine Sultanin awliyas carry that reality is, is, uh, is, is just for entertainment. But to make the connection and begin to make the practices then the servant is ready. They've taken a path in which they're doing their tafakkur, they're strong in the tafakkur, now they're ready. When they're ready then their heart become illuminated more and more and they see the presence of the shaykhs more and more and they feel their hearts are opening. They read the lataif of the qal, they've pretty much memorized the lataif of the qal, they understand every station of the heart in the book and its realities and then they are at a state of being ready. As a result then these realities can begin to dress the heart of the servant inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi what one should visualize, imagine in salah being a nook. If we are nothing then who is praying? Please forgive if the question was inappropriate. Yeah, no problem. I, th I don't think we can talk about that openly because then people are coming from all levels of beginning and middle and intermediate levels. But you see yourself as nothing and making your salah but read the articles on meditation and that should answer that. Read the, the meditation book on how to vanish and how to our, see ourselves as nothing and then see ourselves in the dress of the shaykh. And, and all of that is in the books on the tafakkur, timeless reality and uh, how to, to meditate and to annihilate and leave ourselves and the importance of self inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa When we have a moment of true love towards our beloved Prophet does shaitan play more with that person? I think that anytime we do something good shaitan is playing more with people. Not that he's making that good to appear but that they become jealous that you are reaching towards goodness and as a result may increase the nastiness, badness, uh, bad desires and bad characteristics to distract you. So imagine that you're going towards a reward, immense reward. They're not just going to stay silent and say, oh congratulations look like you're about to get a big prize from Allah. But they're going to make every type of distraction so that you stop and go in their direction. And that's why then people email that they meditate, they become strong, then all of a sudden you know horrific visions, horrific desires. Because shaitan is not happy with a servant trying to reach towards knighthood. And every time he reaches a, a station Allah dresses that night with Divinely lights and that becomes more and more dangerous for the satanic kingdom. So as a result they increase more and more attacks, that's why then the servant increases their madad, increases their practices and that has to be essential. You hear about people whom they read on their own try to study on their own, try to go out and teach on their own and became horrifically ill. Why? Because you underestimated the battle against shaitan, that you thought you could pick up realities, go out now and dispense them but uh, what happened to the satanic kingdom that was going to be attacking you back? And that's why the concept of the madad is taught first by the shaykhs. In this day and age they're teaching right now, connect, 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 make sure your connection is powerful. Because once you connect to that kingdom means the fires, the emanations, the support of the madad is, is with the servant, they're all around the servant and as a result is an immense state of protection. 
Then whatever knowledge is come and whatever da'wah they start to do or whatever links they start to send out is a protected person because they entered into the associations of protection, they, they took their ta'weezes, they took their initiation, they have their madad and that becomes an immense source of protection. And this is a, a gift from the presence of Prophet to the people of humility. The people who say, no, no, we don't need anything, no problem, don't do anything. But I have a feeling you're going to be pounding on the door in, in, you know, in a matter of months if not a year. When people openly become targeted through difficulties and immense difficulties, they were doing that through COVID. That as soon as COVID came the taweezes shot through the roof. But because people didn't think in good times, well that's the difference of the taweez but then they put on news, you know things that you can't see will some come to kill you. Well that's what the tariqah has been teaching for the thousand years. And they finally agreed that these are matching, if things I can't see going to kill me well might as well put this taweez on I stand a better chance of uh, some protection, alhamdulillah not one Nashbandi died from that. There are no reports that Nashbandis are passing left and right, God forbid. But spiritual protection came and spiritual protection protected and all the teachings were describing exactly what these people are doing. So alhamdulillah, the kingdom of the heavens is, is not been left uneducated on earth. So this is an important, important belief, it's a matter of being there people accepting it and following it inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu So if the highest zikr is salawat and durood then how do we do any other voluntary worship when we could be doing durood instead? Please forgive my ignorance. What other worship can you do? <clears throat> the salah, you do your salah because Allah ordered that salah. You do the sunnah prayers because that's like salawat, that's sunnah to Nabi and because Prophet did that. So the salawat is like a sunnah, the sunnah is like a salawat. So anything that was a sunnah of Prophet it's like making to do the sharif. Because Prophet brought it, we will do it. He fed the poor, we will feed the poor. He cared for the orphan and loved the orphans, we shall take care of the orphans and love the orphans. So everything in this way is, is based on that same understanding. That is a durood the sharif that is praying, praising upon the reality of Prophet because we're telling Allah that we're trying to fulfill what your most beloved servant in creation has, has asked of us and what you have ordered of us, so Ya Rabbi be pleased with us. So all in the same line of what we're doing. We have to make Allah pleased first so we do the fard. We have to make Prophet pleased with us so we do our sunnahs. And then everything else now is in that ocean of the sunnah by giving, making salawats, doing da'wah, feeding and taking care of people, being of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad All of that is a salawat and durood al sharif inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah When to know uh, when to know when to accept humiliation for love of Prophet versus stand against something that was wrong? Yeah if it has any relationship to Prophet that if you're with Muhammadan guides or something to do with Islam, something to do with the religion that's for the sake of Prophet You're both an unbeliever and you're arguing at work what that has to do with Prophet but that has to do with good manners. So you want to keep good manners but not to be abused by, by people. And I thought this is very clear that what you do for Prophet has to be related to Prophet 
don't make problem at a masjid because you don't want to embarrass and, and make Prophet to be disappointed with us. Be polite to imams, be polite to believers, be polite to one another, be polite to Muslim people and other people to be representatives of Islam. But again people are thinking of all the thousand ways that they're abused by people and that should they stay quiet because of abuse. No, if they're oppressed, they're oppressed, they make du'a of the oppressed. This is, has to do with if you have the ability and you don't use that ability in Islam. Right? Imam bothered you, said some horrible things and you have the ability to shut him down, make a big problem at the mosque. For example, you say, for the sake of Prophet and fitna, no I'm not going to do that. I'll stick where go my way, go somewhere else. So don't make problems in the way of Islam. Don't, don't make fitnas, don't make uh, these types of crazy issues that the nation is now doing. So these are, are very clear, things that you know would disturb Prophet for that sake don't do it. Stay quiet, be humble, all of these things. But for dunya, no dunya has its own resources, you're at work, you slip and fall, sue them. Of course, why is for Prophet you're not going to sue, they have insurance, take the money. If they didn't provide adequate security and safety for you. Yes, you have a remedy that's available for you in Islam, it's an Islamic remedy. So all of these things have their own common sense and their own understandings inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah I am having more anger which I never knew was inside of me. But after entering the tariqah sometimes I feel like I have a jinn inside me. What is that? A jinn inside you? Why, why, why would the anger be a jinn inside you? InshaAllah, get your ta'weez, make your meditation, do all your practices. Many people have uh, energies inside them. And until they start doing their zikr and making energy and heavenly energies, well you, you, you don't know what's hiding inside you until you turn the flame on. So that, that is always going to be the case, yeah. People think, oh they're great, everything is great, as soon as they came to the presence of the shaykh they became crazy. Why? Because the energy is so intense that things that are hiding within people they can't hide anymore. So they start to come out and interact and in and, and, and strange ways. So this is you know like anything else if the shaykh gives you like these medicines what happens? The snakes come out of people. So they can be spiritual medicines in which just the associations and, and just the gatherings bring out the disease and that's the whole concept. If you didn't want it to come out then imagine it only going to come out in the grave where there's punishment. Better to come out now and do your practices, make your istighfar, hold on, have the manners of Islam, the manners of tariqah. But you know if you're going to start screaming, yelling and cursing and, and going all over the place that's what it means about these lectures of humility. That you should know that you have a sickness and when you come to the tariqah the sicknesses will try to come out before the grave, this is a rahmah from Allah. If, if the sicknesses come out and you don't have good manners what happens? You start to yell and scream and curse and every type of bad characteristic that was inside you. So that's, that's the part that people have to grab and, and control. So they're going to go now to a doctor and, and the, the snakes are going to come out of them. Well the snakes are going to make all sorts of fitna, all sorts of difficulties but you have to have good character and good manners to withstand that so that these things can come out and you can become healed. So I've never seen anybody with uh, possession and, and exorcisms and these things of possessions in Islamic way. As soon as they start to intensely read upon somebody and we don't do that system but other people do that way, this person start yelling and screaming. 
and all sorts of you know horrific things because the, the shaitans inside people don't want to come out. The tariqah system is much more subtle that just the associations and the zikrs and the nazar will slowly cause a situation in which all badness has to leave. And more and more the deeper ones then require more time and, and more activity so that the deep rooted badness can come out. And that's why it takes a while, a while. That's when we described in tariqah everyone comes like a wet log. They feel it's so wonderful, it's so fantastic because they're wet. So when you put fire onto something wet it doesn't know it's burning yet. But after a little bit of time everybody's wet log becomes dry and as soon as you become really dry you can feel the intensity of the heat from the shaykh, from the zikr, from the muraqabah, from all the practices. Doesn't matter whether you're two minutes in front of him or 20,000 miles away. They can reach people wherever they are as long as those people connect their hearts. So then what happens then burning begins, the bad character begins to burn. When that burn is happening then all the shaitans whom are hiding deep within people they have to come out and that's what's necessary is come out. And many times they try to avoid coming out by changing the person and convincing them to run. And so you're running half cooked, where are you running to? There's nowhere to escape cleaning, it's just going to come and clean you in the grave that's 70,000 times more difficult, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah can we give our spouse who is just starting to listen to your sohbas the taweez as well? Sure, you can give to anyone who, who wants to wear the taweez, wants to respect the taweez. But you can't force it on people, on, on children you can, you, they don't know what that is anyway. Just put this taweez is for your blessing until they learn and, and grow into that reality. And anyone who wants it then alhamdulillah say bismillah and put it upon them. And inshaAllah they should be safeguarded by its immense blessings and the barakah and the oceans of humility that we are humble servants of Allah and that we seek a means in which to approach Allah and that Allah by that means to save us and to dress us and to bless us. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.